now good morning well, only just though it's almost noon and it's coming towards the middle of November what is it the 11th today we've just done, had our two minute silence a few minutes ago we just loaded the last few things into Smurf and we're still at home on the drive um, it's quite a bright day although there's clouds above um, Sue's just getting ready to come with us. We're going on a short three mile drive again. It's another one of those AGM rallies. This one's a regional rally um, or the regional section of the Caravan and Motorhome Club, the Anglia region. And they're holding a rally at Hallow Tree, which is a little place in Nacton that uh, Sue's uh, dad, um, when he was uh, younger, he used to go there to the Boy Scouts and um, there's a big scout hut there, lots of grounds and so on. We'll show you a little bit about that when we're down there because it's great for walking the dogs. And it's not far from the Orwell Bridge again. It's um, within screaming distance of the A14. But we're not going to go on the A14, we're going to head down Acton Road and, and, uh, and go past the hospital in that way. So um, it's only a short journey. Although we're only three miles from home, we've got the school run today. So we've, the girlies that are at school, the grandchildren are at school right now, will be coming off the rally field. Not with Smurf, we're going to leave him there. Um, we're going to bring the dogs home, uh, just temporarily, while we do the school run. And then we'll head back to the rally field this evening. Now, we could tow little Ethel, our little white car. Um, we still have all of the kit we need to tow Ethel behind Smurf but Sue has just jumped in the driver's seat here and uh, she's going to follow me um, the three miles or so it just saves hitching up and so on and then we can do the running around with Ethel the little white uh, city go that's a Skoda city go that we've uh, had now for four years or so um, still tow, tow her behind Smurf from time to time and we will on a trip in December so we'll watch out for that as well um, we're off grid and what I was going to talk to you about mainly on this video is how do you cope with off grid for well essentially it's winter I know the weather's been very mild but it is winter time camping now we're in the middle of November we've just topped up um, and we rarely run with a full tank of fresh water but we're only going three miles and we we could top up at the uh, um, scout hut where we're going but we've decided that you know we're lazy we've done it on the drive here so we've got a full tank of water the toilet is ready and primed and ready to go the grey tank is empty I think there is a, uh, a way of uh, disposing of grey water down at the scout hut I'm not sure but we'll come to that later so uh, let's get down to the uh, rally field and um, I'll put the dash cam on and you'll see us drive in down to Hallatry.
Well, we've arrived at the Hallow Tree Activity Centre and it's one of those centres that's operated by the Scouts and has been here for lots of years, as long as I can remember. Um, this estate here is provided for activities for young people. Um, of course, Scouts predominantly was uh, boys and uh, now it's mixed, girls and boys, so um, all the young people get to enjoy this fantastic centre. To take you for a little walk around the estate, we'll um, not be able to enter some of it because there is a, a, um, a cub camp going on with the young uh, children, so we won't be able to enter that area. But I can describe to you what's down there and we'll have a look at some of the other uh, things that are here at Hallow Tree. So I'm standing in the main car park here and uh, the uh, caretaker's bungalow is uh, in the distance there. Little, a little Ethel, <laughs> a little white car, I parked it round here and um, the caravans and motorhomes are parked round the other side of this building which is the main hall. There's a couple of halls here. Now just here is the entrance to the rally field where we uh, came into um, at the start of the weekend and it's operated by the North Essex uh, Centre of the Caravan and Motorhome Club and they put signs out to indicate where to go. This is quite a big estate, you could easily go down the wrong path. Um, this is the little entrance driveway and uh, through there's some caravan storage and then you're on to the rally field. Well we're back on the rally field, I just walked back with uh, Joe chatting away and uh, this is where most of the caravans are parked and motorhomes. Um, I think there must be about 40 vans here, which is pretty good. Over the back there, there's some more activity huts and uh, some floodlighting. I think there's um, a little football pitch over there. And amongst the trees, there's lots of places for the camps to uh, get together. Uh, more vans at this end of the field. And uh, in the distance there, you can see there's a tower. Now, uh, we think that's uh, where they train the young people to do abseiling and uh, things of that nature, get them used to heights. And the North Essex uh, centre of the Caravan Club flag is flying in this little field where there's a few more caravans and motorhomes parked. Smurf is just over here. And now we're around the back of the hall, as you can see here. And we're in the back. And near the, uh, the entrance there. Well, here we are in the field with Smurf. Um, we are completely off-grid here. As you look round, you'll see there's no electric hookup on this particular uh, pitch. And the field is marked out by the, the rally marshals, so we've got plenty of space. And one or two of the um, vans who have the requirement for electric hookup have got them, but we didn't need it, so we've uh, gone off grid. And there we are. And uh, over the back here, there's another field, and uh, the at the back of this field is where the Cub Scouts are this weekend. And uh, there's the tower. And a huge field. And behind those trees it drops down to the River Orwell. And there's uh, park homes and so on. There's a, um, a big uh, park home estate there. Uh, behind the trees too, but eventually if you go down the little path you do come to the river and the Orwell Bridge. Well on the roof of Smurf we do have a 200 watt solar panel and the solar panel has been active most of the weekend and I'm just looking at my, my phone app here and uh, it does show me, it's connected by Bluetooth to the, um, the regulator, it does show me that we're currently charging there, there's very little sunshine up there this morning there's a little bit of blue sky but it's been quite foggy so there's no direct sunshine but we are picking up around about 21 watts of solar power and um, the battery voltage is 13.33 uh, volts so we are picking up a little bit um, 
from 200 watts if you had full sun you'd expect it to be um, much more than that but it's currently um, drawing about 20 or 21 watts um, and I could show you that and there we are you see at the top the uh, icon is flashing charging uh, it says the sun is out it's not really um, and there uh, you're getting uh, in the bottom section there 20 watts of power into the battery and on the history page of the app you can see in the last few days we've got a little bit of uh, solar power yesterday in particular when uh, we were out in the sun and we've got a little bit more charge in, in the battery there doesn't mean a lot to me either really uh, at the end of the day all you know is that the battery is being charged by the solar panel and you're a little bit under the power of the weather really to see how much power, how much energy you get stored from the sun in terms of fresh water we know that we've got around about 60 liters of fresh water on board and then there's 10 liters in the uh, Truma boiler so um, the usable water is about 60 liters um, those of you who caravan or have caravan before will know that the, the aqua roll barrels um, or equivalent are usually about 40 litres and when we were caravanners we found we would use one of those a day so about 40 litres a day but that included off-grid showering and uh, cooking and, and all of those things that you would do normally in your motorhome or caravan so if you can manage on 30 litres let's say you know that you've got at least two days fresh water in your camper van. So that's a good guide. Around about 30 litres is good, but you do have to be careful. You know, you're washing up um, and all of this sort of thing. You, to, you try and keep it to the minimum amount of water if you can. Now, uh, LPG, we don't carry any uh, Calagas bottles um, or any of the uh, other brands either. We have LPG, an LPG tank underslung underneath the van, which is equivalent of about 12 kilograms, which is roughly speaking uh, two six kilogram bottles. And we filled that up um, a couple of weeks ago. We haven't used very much of it yet, and even now it's still showing as full. We've been putting the fridge on because we've had the fridge running with our um, uh, milk and cheese and stuff like that. and. Uh, and we've also been running the heating at times not all the time but just to keep us warm slightly uh, overnight we just have it on tick over and then in the evenings or, or during the day when it's been a bit chilly we've put it on here as well well under the van there is the drain off points for fresh and grey water the grey water tank is about 40 litres remember the fresh was 60 the grey water is about 40 litres now the last you want, thing you want to do really is to to be driving around with two full tanks. We're off grid, we have our power. Um, we, we also run our little power oak as well and I've been charging our phones and our laptop from that. And here's the power oak that we use. It's a power oak 500 and it's uh, got the two uh, main sockets along with a 12 volt socket and these are sockets for LED lights which we don't use. He's got the controls here showing you how much charge is left and how much is being used and then there are four USB points just here. Um, it can be charged from the uh, car battery or the van battery whilst you're driving along um, or on mains and also there's a solar panel that comes with it as well that you can use for recharging the unit. The, the nice thing that we like about this is that you can actually place your mobile phone on the top, switch the DC on, the mobile phone will charge on the pad on the top of the unit. Well I've come right down to the bottom of the Hallow Tree estate now, right down as far as you can go um, before it turns into private land and then the uh, River Orwell and if I swing round it, um, in the distance here you can see the Raven Hut which is the uh, smaller hut uh, on the um, in the grounds and uh, there is a, a footpath that, walk, that you can walk down to the river through here by these trees um, it's quite steep and it's a little bit wet this morning but um, I know a few people that have been down there uh, at their peril <laughs> but here's the river Orwell and it looks like there's a few yachts out there it's a beautiful day here mid-November 2022 and there's a few yachts going up and down there we've heard the, the hooter go off as they 
pass a finish line presumably but uh, really quite pretty down there with the uh, autumn sunshine. Well that just about brings us to the end of this video and the end of the weekend for us. Um, we've been amongst a lot of people we hadn't seen for a very long time over uh, the last three years. Um, things have been very different in the camping and caravan and world and uh, we've caught up with uh, a few old faces and a few new ones too that uh, people we've not met before. So it's been one of those weekends. Um, there was some um, entertainment and food put on along the way, most of which I didn't record because there was lots of people in the hall and not everybody wants to be on YouTube, do they? So uh, we gave them the respect of keeping the camera in the bag. And, uh, uh, but what I did get to do was ask for one or two, uh, uh, one or two people's permission because there were some highlights. And uh, we had, first of all, on Friday night, we had uh, an auction. And there was a few uh, few things going for the children in need. And uh, here's a couple of them, both uh, Joy and uh, Mike, definitely getting into it uh, with the auction. And then uh, after that, we had some light entertainment from this couple. Well, I can't explain that, but uh, <laughs> we did have a laugh and they were very kind to give us the footage. Um, and I've just shown you a clip. It was hilarious, I have to say. There was uh, uh, music bingo, so they played a track and you had to work out what the track was and then you crossed it off your list on bingo. So that was quite fun. And then the late night entertainment, well, again, I don't think I can explain this. So that was Friday, and uh, we, we didn't think it would get, get any better really. Um, that was, well, the North Essex centre of the Caravan and Motorhome Club um, at their best, in my opinion. A really good laugh, and uh, fantastic. Thank you guys for putting on that. Um, on Saturday, um, we had uh, free time to do what we wanted. We went for a walk, and Sue had to go to the hairdressers. In the evening was uh, a singer, a local singer, who was very good. He did a lot of Rat Pack and Elvis and uh, there was one or two popular tunes thrown in there as well which was really nice and that uh, set the scene for the end really of a real entertaining weekend. On Sunday morning we had the form formalities of the AGM and uh, all the new committee members will be uh, ready and set for another year next year in 2023 in the Anglia region. So it was all good fun. On tomorrow morning we're setting off on another trip and uh, we're heading off down to uh, uh, the outskirts of London and then up to Norfolk and that will take us through uh, the next 10 days. So uh, these dogs are pulling my arm, they want to finish their walk. So we'll see you on the next video. Take care.